Cuties, how you doing today on this Thursday, huh? You, Becca Ham, you, Eureka, gonna be late for work. You, Vanek, Cherry Tuna, Justin Santo, Ed McMahon, Louis Villa, Bra322, you, Bayou Becky, you, Slimothy, how are you doing? Slimothy, not a fan of that name. Change that name. Folks, it is Thursday, December 7th, 2017, a date that has lived in infamy for 76 years. Do you know why? Because on December 7th, 1941, the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service attacked the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor, propelling us into the Second World War. 76 years later, we remember those servicemen who lost their lives. We reflect the horrors of war, including the forced relocation and internment of over 100,000 Japanese Americans. And then we grab a bento or bowl of ramen for lunch because that's the beauty of America today. That's the beauty of HQ2, the trivia game show on your phone where you answer questions to win cash. I'm your host with the Crab Toast, Scott Rogowski, AKA the Woke Woolery, AKA the Trap Trebek, AKA Regis Trilbin. Coming to you live and in color from the greatest city on earth, the city that never sleeps, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Greeting you on this late autumn day, all 142,000 plus of you, including Sean43, Tyler Gallucci, and a special shout out to Lainey J from her dad, JK69. Your dad says you should be studying, Lainey. Well, dad, she is studying. HQ counts for studying, right? You're gonna learn something today. Is this your first time on the HQ grind? Well, it might grind you down, but in a good way. Let me tell you how to play. I'm gonna ask 12 questions ranging from easy to hard. You have 10 seconds before I start reading the question to tap the correct answer. If you do get it right, you move on to the next round. If you answer all 12 questions correctly, you win or split the cash prize. And today's prize, big money prize, 1,000 donuts, 1,000 deer hooves, $1,000 redos. Think of all the yakitori, the sushi, the sashimi, and matcha mochi you can buy for all that money. Matcha mochi. Mm -mm -mm. All right, folks. I told you the rules. I gave it to you straight. You want to get down to business here? I'm also thinking, by the way, of the people in Los Angeles County, Ventura County, the wildfires out there. It's crazy. I saw photos and videos. It looks like Dante's Peak over there. I hope you're safe. The SoCal H cuties are safe and ready to play. Maybe winning today could lift your spirits, huh? Who doesn't want to win a little money? Answer some questions. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get this show on the road. Q1, the audio equipment term hi-fi is short for what? Hippo fitting, hilarious fiction, or high fidelity? It's an audio term, a stereo term. If you're really an audiophile, you would know this one. Here's a hint. John Cusack, Jack Black, Lisa Bonet, high fidelity. It was also a book and a movie. High fi is high fidelity, and 133,307 players are hearing high quality, true sound after that one. What came first, the music or the misery? Well, I'll tell you what's coming next, Q2. Q2 is coming next. Of the three states of matter, which keeps its own shape, liquid, gas, or solid? Taking you back to physics class with this one. Maybe you're sitting in physics class right now. Did your teacher stop down the class to play HQ? Well, he's gonna be proud of you. If you get this one right, three states of matter, liquid, solid, or gas. Solid gold, solid keeps its own shape. Who's solid gold after that one? 114,267. Solids are bonded together. Liquids are loose enough to flow. Gases are loose enough to disperse. We have 114,267 players moving on. The rest of you have sublimated, sublimated and vaporized. You're gone. Q3, which Pixar movie prominently featured a lot of balloons? The Incredibles, Up, or Toy Story 2? Who's feeling sublime right now? You made it this far. You're on Q3. Do you know your Pixar movies? Up, up and away in my beautiful, my beautiful balloon. Up! 112,429, remember the saddest Pixar movie ever, especially those first 10 minutes. And those balloons were not just for decoration, you know, they helped the house go and put to the sky. One's gotta wonder if balloon sales also ballooned following that movie. 112,429 players are skyrocketing to Q4. The jurisdiction of net neutrality falls under what government agency? NEH, DOI, or FCC? Net neutrality, a hot button topic right now. Folks, they're voting on net neutrality next week. 
what agency is voting to possibly roll back the regulations? Is it the NEH, the National Endowment for Humanities? No. The DOI, the Department of Interior? No. It's the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. They oversee TV, radio, telephone, and internet regulation. 91,252 knew it. You guys are woke. You know what's happening right now. They're trying to take away our free internet. Well, it's not free, technically. You pay like $70 a month. But if these regulations are rolled back, that $70 a month could be like $370 a month. All your shows are going to be more expensive to watch online. HQ, they might force you to pay to play HQ. That wouldn't be right. So get mad. Show your support. Keep net neutrality. Write a letter to your congressperson. It might, it might do something. It, it probably won't, but just... Be vocal, tweet about it. Q5, from which country does goulash originate? Greece, Hungary, or Lebanon? Goulash. I'll tell you where you can get some good goulash in New York City. That I know. Little diner called Veselka. Ninth and second, get some goulash at Veselka. Or if you're in Hungary, and you're hungry in Hungary, you could also get some goulash there. Goulash comes from Hungary. 69,719 are hungry for some money today. Goulash translates from the Hungarian for shepherds. It translates to shepherds. Herdsman's meat. Goulash. Kind of a ghoulish term there. 69,719. Moving on to Q6. The character of Sid Barrett in Legion shares her name with the co-founder of what band? Sex Pistols, The Clash, or Pink Floyd? Do you guys know this show, Legion? I believe it's on FX, based on the X-Men movies, Legion. Sid Barrett. Who else is Sid Barrett? Do you know your, your classic rock? One of the founders of Pink Floyd? Sid Barrett? Not a coincidence, the creators wanted the show to have a dark side of the moon feel, and ooh, savage right there. 23,082 got it right, but we lost over 43,000 HQDs with that one. Sid Barrett. Honey, love you, honey, love you, funny, money, sunny, morning, honey, love you. He wrote a lot of nonsense songs. He was great. We have 23,000 crazy diamonds shining on to the next question. But before I get there, are you following us on Twitter yet? Are you? At HQ Trivia on Twitter, twitter.com slash HQ Trivia. Shout out to the HQDs who are following, like Brittany Goodman, Phil Sharpiro, Dave Sachs, Lottie Smith, Greg Pesto, Austin Hunt, and Gremlin Boy. Gremlin Boy's following us. We should probably be scared about that. Q7 for the 23,082 players left. Which of these is the study of inscriptions? Scriptography, ecritology, or epigraphy? Scriptography, ecritology, epigraphy. There you go. Epigraphy, epigraphy, you know. You say one, I say the other. Maybe neither of them are correct. Are you studying or inspecting inscriptions or writings in general? If you are, it's epigraphy, yeah. Epigraphy is the study of inscriptions and 14,512 got it right. If you are at the office right now looking at an ancient tablet or rune, you might be an epigrapher. Shout out to Jeff Foxworthy on that one. 14,512, moving on to Q8. Which of these dogs is not an English breed? Bull Terrier, Beagle, or Basset Hound. Not an English breed. That means two of them are, one is not. Which one is not English? Oh, mama. Helps to know your, uh, your roots, your language roots in this one. Because uh, one of these words there, Basset, includes B-A-S, which is French for ba, meaning low. Ba, ba relief. Ba, Basset, it's a French dog breed. Basset hounds are French breeds. The other two are British, mes amis. And we're down like to 3,970. Another savage question right there. Bruhu to hull, 3,978. We just lost close to 10 grand on that one. Chipping away here, winnowing it down. But 3,978 are vying for best in show today. They're moving on to Q9, growling along Barking along here, which Nathaniel Hawthorne novel is written in the first person? The Blythedale Romance, The Scarlet Leather, or The House of the Seven Gables? Nathaniel Hawthorne. 
getting lit right now. We are Liddy at HQ here asking about Liddy. Daniel Hawthorne wrote many novels. This third romance novel is the only one written from the first person point of view, and that one is The Blythedale Romance. Henry James called it his lightest, brightest, and loveliest of all the unhumorous fictions. And 907 are getting lit right now, staying lit on this Thursday afternoon. They knew this one. Tricky question there. 907 players left. You got to answer three more questions, including Q10. Which of these artists was in the original lineup of the Newport Folk Festival? Peter, Paul, and Mary, the Kingston Trio, or Arlo Guthrie? The very first lineup for the Newport Folk Festival, not the Newport Jazz Festival, which preceded the Folk Festival. Actually, the Newport Folk Festival was founded 1959 as an addendum to the Newport Jazz Fest, most famous for Bob Dylan switching to electric cigarettes in 1965. The inaugural lineup of the Newport Folk Fest in 1959 included Pete Seeger, Earl Scruggs, and bop, 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 hello, hello, ah, bop, bop, oh, baby. That's the Kingston Trio. Who else? The Kingston Trio. And three, 28 are left after that one. Rockin' and rollin' on to Q11. The Kingston Trio. That was a very controversial song, by the way. No one could understand what they were saying. And that song actually was banned on a lot of radio play. Of course, the banning led to more sales as it does. 328, moving on to Q11, whose resignation during the Velvet Revolution effectively ended communist rule in Czechoslovakia? Antonin Novotny, Gustav Husak, or Milos Jakish? Got through those, whew. Yeah, throw all these Czechoslovakian names at me all day long. I'll take them all down. Antonin Novotny, Gustav Husak, Milos Jakish. Bam! Well, guess what, folks? It's replaced Husak for just two years before the protests of the Velvet Revolution started, this ended communist rule in 1989, and it was Milos Jakish who resigned on November 24th, 1989, effectively ending communist party rule. Milos Jakish is your answer. And we're down to 130, just like that. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We're at 130 HQDs entering the octagon for the final round. Q12, folks, this is it. It all boils down to this. 130 HQ players, $1,000 on the line. Who's gonna just wrap their hands around all that dough, scrape it all together, take it home, take a bath in it, whatever you wanna do with it. Q12, in 1956, all-around champion Victor Chukarin set which Olympic gymnastics record that still stands? Highest men's score, oldest champion, or youngest champion? Highest men's score, oldest champ, or youngest champ? Victor. In 1952, first entered the Olympics because that's when the Soviet Union first entered the Olympics. He won the all-around championship in 1952. And he came back in 1956 to win it yet again. But he would never win another championship. Why? Because in 1956, he was already 34 years old, making him in Olympic terms ancient and the oldest champion then and ever. Victor Chukrin, the oldest champion. That is your answer. And we got 60 winners. Oh! <laughs> 60 winners. The big 6-0. Alex the Wall, Marco Siabs. Owen Auk, Andrew Hart, Swedish Otaku, DM Phillips 13, DJE 91090. You're all taking home $16.67. Maybe some of you get 66 cents, depending on how that breaks down. But hey, 16 bucks, 60 cents, that's good enough for a, for a bento box. That's good enough for a, a halal for a couple days. You know, hot, hot sauce, white sauce, red sauce. Hook it up. Go crazy with your money. Congratulations, you just won a huge game of HQ. Thank you for playing. If you wanna come back, well, we do this every weekday at 3 p.m. and every night during the week and weekends at 9 p.m. That means I'm back tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. 
I'll be seeing all of you then. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Until then, I'm Scott Rogaski signing off saying, a flute with no holes is not a flute, and a donut with no hole is a Danish. <laughs>